we are recording, and I have the pleasure of chatting with my good friend Andy Drum. Andy, can you please uh, introduce yourself to the crowd? Hi, yeah, Andy Drum. I'm an ecotourism and sustainable tourism specialist. Uh, I've been working in Latin America and the Caribbean these past 20 years or so. Um, I've established a successful ecotourism business in Ecuador uh, and a foundation that works with indigenous people in the Amazon. And uh, currently I'm working as a consultant for organizations such as the UNDP. All right. This UNDP report I'm particularly interested in. Uh, can you please uh, tell folks the details about the report that you've been editing? Sure, yeah. We're in final stages of editing a report which we've worked on for the last year. Um, looking at the economic contribution of biodiversity and ecosystem services to development and equity uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Oh. What is the contribution, in other words, of nature to tourism? Um, how does tourism benefit from healthy biodiversity and ecosystem services? And it's been a very interesting piece of work. All right. Now, one of the questions I've had in the past 20 years of looking at ecotourism in Latin America in particular is that it's been very difficult to get good data. In other words, not really finding that information either about the parks and the protected areas themselves or tourism. And when you combine it and you're trying to look at the contributions of nature and biodiversity to tourism, what sort of data were you able to find? Yeah. Um in a nutshell, um, data of that nature is very limited. I was surprised, in fact, how limited. I would really expected now that we've been uh, playing this ecotourism game for quite a while that there'd be more documentation out there that uh, elucidated the financial dimension of the relationship between healthy nature, biodiversity, and, and tourism. We all know that ecotourism and adventure tourism and other types of tourism uh, depend heavily on healthy nature, um, but there's remarkably little data out there. One of the things that has come through in this report, which I've been pleased to be able to, to document, is the degree to which not just ecotourism and so on is dependent on nature, but how conventional business as usual tourism, such as we see plenty of in, in Mexico and the Caribbean, is also very highly dependent on healthy biodiversity. Excellent, excellent. Would I assume that one of your recommendations in this report is to have better data, better information from the governments? Absolutely. I mean, if, if governments, policymakers in general, are going to be able to make the best decisions to promote equity and economic development, then there's an urgent need for better data and more data, which demonstrates and documents the links between nature uh, and tourism. Um, it's remarkable how little uh, policy makers are aware of um, the relationship and how much biodiversity is already contributing to tourism's uh, financial health. Uh, I'd say we were actually in a situation now, unless uh, governments wake up to uh, um, this relationship, then even conventional tourism is at risk of, of being undermined uh, uh, by this lack of data, basically. So I, I think um, what we need to see are universities and other research institutions, governments themselves, investing considerable amounts of uh, uh, effort into documenting this relationship. And now I have a big what if question uh, or kind of a positing question. Is the problem, is the challenge at hand the fact that those in tourism still aren't talking to people in conservation and the parks departments and vice versa? That there's kind of a poor interior dialogue within the countries themselves? That's undoubtedly one of the elements. I, I would say that financial ministries, which are you know, the powerful uh, ministries, the ones that hold the purse strings, uh, do not, one, understand the relationship between nature and economic development. Um, 
if they talk to the tourism ministries, the tourism ministries themselves, while they may be investing a lot in marketing nature, uh, are not necessarily responsible for ensuring that that nature is going to be there tomorrow or that the tourism that they're promoting uh, is going to be sustainable. And then the ones that are responsible for managing nature, usually the ministries of environment, the parks departments and so on, um, they tend to be disconnected from uh, financial expertise and understanding the own, the, their, their own financial contribution to economic development. They're very poorly prepared to make their case to financial ministers about how much they're contributing to development. Park systems, far from being a burden on the economies, as they're so often portrayed and understood to be, are actually increasingly major drivers of economic development in Latin America. Beautiful. Hey, when does this report come out? Um, it's expected to be ready um, in the next couple of months. I know that uh, one of the first uh, destinations of this report will be the General Assembly of the UN at a meeting in September in this uh, International Year of Biodiversity. Excellent. Hey, well, thank you for your time. A pleasure, Ron. Always.